here, you're probably interested in seeing the most beautiful island in the world named by Travel and Leisure Magazine. And it really is like amazingly beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome. But there are some things that we had no idea about before we got to Palawan, even after extensive research online. So we've broken everything down for you, everything that you need to know, all the little details, so that when you visit Coron, you can just have the trip of a lifetime. So getting there, there are a few ways to get to Palawan from Manila. There is Skyjet Airways, Air Asia, and Cebu Pacific. We took a direct flight with Cebu Pacific, but we made the mistake of buying our bag fees at the airport, and they charged us about $35 US, and if we were to get them online, it would have been around $8. So make sure you buy your baggage online before you get to the airport. Staying in Coron, make sure that you're staying in the town of Coron because there's a lot of places that you can stay on the outskirts of town, but it takes so long to get there, and you're also much farther away from civilization. Outside of Coron town is extremely rural. You're very far away from your amenities and, and restaurants and bars and food, things like that. Important things you really wanna be in the center of town for. And that leads us into eating there. Eating in Coron is amazing. You can choose from a mix of modern restaurants, Filipino restaurants, and food stalls, all ranging in price. You can get a meal as low as 50 cents in the Coron public market. Yeah. But it's gonna be Filipino cuisine. So depending on your taste, you can find meals as cheap as 50 cents. And then if you decide you want a nice night out, we both went to a restaurant, sit down, with a gorgeous sunset view for $15, including a 20% tip. So it's very affordable anywhere you decide to go. Now to piggyback off of the restaurants and food is tipping. We both grew up in the restaurant industry. We were both bartenders and servers uh, practically our whole lives. Yeah. So we understand the industry and we understand that we're always gonna be tippers no matter what. And we found that tipping really isn't common in most of these restaurants. However, restaurant workers do expect tips from tourists especially. Most restaurants here in the Philippines will add a 10% service fee to your bill, which is essentially like a tip, uh, but then we leave a little bit more than that. We always leave 20% no matter what. Now the next thing, which is super important to me because I work remotely, is internet speeds. And I'm gonna tell you, Corona is Ooh. not good for internet speeds. <laughs> Connecting to the internet is pretty non-existent while you're in the town of Coron. I would say the best time that I saw some speeds, I was able to connect and you know do emails and, and load websites, things like that, I would say roughly like three to six a.m. And in order to connect to the internet, you need access to data. And the way to do that is by getting a SIM card when you get off the airline. Right in the airport, there's gonna, you're gonna see kiosks and people trying to get a SIM card in your hands. Don't think of it as a sales tactic. They're not making any money off of you. We realize that. Just pick, choose which company you wanna go with. There's two of them here in the Philippines. One's called Globe Network and the other one is called Smart. And I think the prices were, how much did we get? We, got, we each got six gigs of data and I think the total was... Under $30 for the entire month, which is great. And yeah. you get one free gigabyte in the first three days when you buy a SIM package anyway. So we ended up getting 14 total gigabytes of data and we're in week two and have gone through half. So that's yeah. pretty much all we'll need for the entire month. Paying there. This is something that we weren't particularly used to because of credit cards and Apple Pay and all of that. Coron is pretty much 100% a cash only town, including the hotels and airport transfer fees. So make sure you have cash, especially small bills, because a lot of places cannot break anything over 500 pesos, which is only 10 US dollars anyway. The other thing you wanna make sure about is the ATM fees. You're already gonna get like a 250 peso fee for using the ATM, but then your credit card is gonna also charge you, most likely, another fee on top of that. So just be aware of that. Take a lot of money out when you go so that you have enough to use. So you don't have to keep getting ATM fees. So another thing to consider when you're visiting another country is the water. You have to stay hydrated. Uh, in most of these countries, you should be drinking bottled water. There is a place called Aquasafe, which is right down the road, right in the center of Coron, and you can get all your filtered water. They do all the filtration right on premise. And we got like a two liter bottle of water for 35 pesos, which is roughly 65 cents American. Exploring there. This is definitely the reason why you're in Coron Palawan in the first place. It is absolutely amazing. And if you caught our last video, we showed you all of the islands surrounding Coron on a private boat that we took, yeah. which was, I think, 
the best experience of our entire life. There's two options when you want to go island hopping off of Caron. You can do a group tour or a private boat. Group tours range you anywhere from 900 pesos all the way up to 1500 pesos and you'll be on a boat with anywhere from 10 to 15 people roughly. We opted for the private tour which was 5000 pesos but really 5000 pesos is under $100 US for the entire boat, 8 hours on the water, just the two of us, two boatmen and a tour guide. So this is our boat for the day. Hello. All right, we are on our boat. Just you and me and the crew. That's Rose behind there somewhere. So She's sweet. If, if you're gonna go and take one of these tours, I highly suggest you do the private route because you don't wanna be on a boat with a bunch of other tourists and you're bumping into people, you got, you're mixing up your bags, everything's, it's hectic and it's just not fun. But when you have a private boat, you have your own tour guide, they're walking you around, they're telling you about the scenery, they're explaining about the culture of the area, and you're getting information, and you're able to just chill. You have the whole boat to yeah. yourselves. So the really great thing about being on a private tour is you're on your own time frame. So what our tour guide did was she led us to all the spots after the peak time of all the other group boats. So we got a lot of our pictures and videos with very few tourists in the frame. Yeah, we got very lucky with that. Booking these tours is relatively easy. You'll have people asking you to, if you want a private boat all the time while you're walking around Corona Town. If you want to play it safe, you can book the night before. We went the morning of around 8 a.m. and scheduled a boat for 9 a.m. It took us about three stops to find someone who had an available boat for us, but it didn't, it wasn't that hard. Yeah, you'll always, there's always somebody walking around who has access to a boat that can take you out for the day. Last but not least, there are entrance fees to all of the islands that you're going to go to on the island tour. The entrance fees go to the families in order to keep the island pristine and also to keep the islands out out of the government's hands because if the islands were owned by the government it would make way for commercial buildings to pop up which would really ruin the natural scenery of all of these beautiful places yeah. and and those prices are built into the amount of your tour to begin with Ooh. so you're not paying for your tour and then an additional cost to get into the island so have an amazing time exploring it's the number one thing to do in Caron Palawan I would even do two days if you want. There's probably 15 different places you could go to. Yeah. We hit around six in one day in one eight hour tour, but you can probably stretch that out to be two full days of island hopping. Yeah, there's plenty to see. So if you, if you have some time, stay there for an extra day or two and really visit as much as you can. So driving in Corona, we have a bit of a personal connection with that. <laughs> this is like way scarier than I thought it would be. So it was the first time I've ever ridden a moped. It was the first time we ever rented anything like that. So it was very scary because you're just thrown into the mix. It's like, okay, here's the bike that you've never ridden before. Here's how to use it, which you don't really understand what they're saying. And then go into traffic with everyone else that knows what they're doing. I was scared. And st like Stacia said to me, she sees that I'm never scared about stuff and she could sense that I was nervous. And that freaked me out. But I gotta say that even though it was, I was nervous and it was scary and it was crazy and it, it was something new. So if you're into that, get a moped. <laughs> you could opt to have somebody drive you, which in retrospect probably would have been a better idea. However, it's going to be a little bit more expensive and you don't have the freedom of coming and going whenever you please. The motorbikes will run you anywhere from 100 pesos for the hour to 500, to maybe 700 for the day. And the last thing, which is pretty important to people that are coming in from another side of the world, is communication. In Corona, I'd say there is a bit larger of a language barrier. Uh, you'll be able to communicate with people fine, uh, but it'll just take a little bit longer to kind of get your words out and, uh, and make sure that everyone understands and they're all on the same page. Yeah, so what we suggest is downloading Google Translate or any other translation app on your phone. You can even download the Filipino language, which is called Tagalog, offline so you don't have any problems accessing the translation off of wi-fi or off of 3g speaking of communication we did just want to throw it out there 
Filipinos are extremely friendly and they will help you no matter what you need. We found so much kindness throughout this country so far. Yeah. And even if they don't speak the same language, a smile, a hello, a thank you is always waiting for you in the Philippines. It really is. Everybody's just so kind here. They really will go out of their way to help you in any way that they can. Uh, it's it's a great country and we, we can't wait to visit again. I mean, we, we've explored so much so far. We still have a lot more of exploring to do. So be sure to subscribe down below because we have many more videos coming out of the Philippines. Totally. If you have any more questions about visiting Palawan or Coron in particular, leave a comment down below. Let us know. We'd be happy to help. We respond to every comment that we see. So I think that's about it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and got a little bit of information out of it. And we'll be sure to share as much as we can along the way. Yeah. Next stop is Barakai. Barakai. We'll see you in the next video. See ya.